Welcome to Opinion Journal Live. I'm Mary Kissel from the Wall Street Journal's headquarters in New York City. Any moment now, we're expecting President Obama to announce his intent to nominate former Republican Senator Chuck Hagel for Secretary of Defense and counterterrorism chief John Brennan to head the Central Intelligence Agency. Editorial page editor Paul Gigot joins us now to discuss. Paul, welcome. Uh, hi, Mary. Um, let's start with Mr. Hagel. He's had a, a pretty rocky reception from factions of the left and the right. Why move ahead with his nomination? Well, uh, a very good question, and I think it, uh, it's, it's an interesting, fascinating nomination for that reason, because he knows, the president knows, he's going to have to spend some political capital on behalf of Mr. Hagel because the, there's going to be a substantial body of opposition to him. So why do it? Well, presumably, the president believes that Hagel is the man uh, for the job he wants at defense, which is carrying out the White House policy at defense, which I think is going to be uh, predominantly, predominantly a budget cutting exercise. And uh, I think he figures he's getting in Hegel somebody who agrees with him ideologically and programmatically and will be loyal to the White House. And makes it look bipartisan because he is a Republican in the slot. At least nominally so, <laughs> though I think with what we've heard from some of the Republicans, uh, I'm not sure how much bipartisan support he's getting. <laughs> okay, so let's let's take a look then at the national security team. If we have a John Kerry uh, at state, if we had a Chuck Hagel at defense, and we had a John Brennan as the head of the right. CIA, w what does that team tell you about how the White House is going to approach uh, national well, security and foreign policy? I, I, a couple things. One is it's much more ideologically in sync. There's more. There's less of a difference of opinion, if you can believe it, than the first term, where you had independent thinkers uh, and people of independent stature. Uh, Secretary of State Clinton obviously had her own views, uh, had experienced what her, her what how her white ha her president her husband governed <laughs> in the White House. Uh, Leon Panetta at defense, and before that Robert Gates, who was a holdover from Bush, who had his own independent stature. Now you're talking about people who are going to be fundamental, not only agree with the White House and the president fundamentally, and maybe in some cases even to his left, in Chuck Hagel's case, but also institutionally, politically, um, really dependent on the White House and loyal to the White House. So Obviously, Brennan going, replacing Petraeus, for example, CIA, and, uh, and Hagel to the extent to which there's a fight, and the president needs to expend capital on him, he'll be even more uh, dependent on the White House. Does Hagel have the votes? Uh, well, my assumption, uh, operating assumption, is that the president would not have gone ahead unless he had consulted with Harry Reid, the Senate Majority Leader, and Carl Levin, the Armed Services Chairman, who's a Democrat, and who, they t who told him, yes, you've got the votes. Okay, so if they have the votes then, how should the GOP use this nomination fight? What can they do? Well, I think what they can do is use this opportunity uh, uh, to educate the American public, not so much about Hegel, but use Hegel to educate the country about the president's foreign policy. I think the analogy here is to a fight that you're way too young for this, but I'm not. <laughs> Thanks, Paul, <laughs> Paul Warnke was uh, the Jimmy Carter's nomination to be uh, nominee to run the Arms Control and Disarmament Agency in 1977, the height of the Cold War. and. Uh, Scoop Jackson, the Democratic senator, uh, knew he wasn't going to beat uh, Warnke, but he used the opportunity to oppose him anyway to try to illustrate how Warnke's views were indicative potentially and a warning to the country about Carter's views and to try to steer, get some commitments from Warnke about arms control. And it turned out to be, in many ways, um, just to laid out what would happen. An in educational the exercise. Yeah, and I, I think I think the Republicans are through careful questioning, and there'll be some Democrats, remember, who are not sold on this guy, who will also want to do it. Um, what really are your uh, views, and what do you think about the president's policies towards Israel, Iran, Syria, China, uh, and towards the the Asia pivot that is a pivot without portfolio, a pivot without actual resources to conduct the pivot in a serious way. Uh, what do you think about the uh, increasing Chinese truculence in the East China Sea and the South China Sea? Get Hegel on the record. Get him on the record about the F-35, which, you know, the, the, the new fighter, joint strike fighter, which is increasingly under budget pressure. Get him on the record about what we need as a naval uh, uh, force in the future. A declining naval force. It's declining, and we're going to need it, presumably, if we're going to do this pivot. Get him on record on those things. And then and the, along the way, I mean, he may, he may well, and I would guess right now, probably will be confirmed. But along the way, you will have won some commitments from him that may be hard to walk back from. 
And second, you'll have educated the public about his politics. Well, we're going to have the president's announcement live on WSJ.com. You can go to our homepage for that. We're looking at a live shot there right now. We're going to leave it at that, though, for you, Paul, editorial page editor, Paul Gigo. Thanks, Mary. Thank you for being with us.